this video, we're going to talk about how to evaluate a limit using factoring. The problem we've been given is the limit as x approaches 2 of this rational function, x squared minus 5x plus 6, all divided by x squared minus 4. And what you notice is that the limit is x approaching 2, the value 2. So what would happen here if we just tried to use substitution, which is always our first option when we're evaluating a limit. Sometimes we'll just be able to use substitution and plug in this value directly. But if we were to plug in 2, directly, what we would get is 2 squared here, or 4, minus 2 times 5, so minus 10, plus 6, all divided by 2 squared in the denominator, which would be 4, so we'd end up with 4 minus 4. And if we simplified this further, what we'd see is that we'd end up with 0 over 0, an indeterminate form. So using substitution to try to evaluate this limit isn't going to work at this point. We end up with this indeterminate form. So what's going to be our next option if substitution doesn't work? Well, you should always look to see if factoring is an option for evaluating the limit. Factoring is always what you want to try after substitution. And factoring is particularly attractive if you've been given a rational function like this one with polynomials in the numerator and denominator of a fraction because you might be able to factor the numerator and factor the denominator and cancel a factor that then allows you to evaluate the limit using substitution such that you don't end up with an indeterminate form. So if we look at this rational function, in the numerator we have x squared minus 5x plus 6. Well, can we factor that? The factors of the coefficient on x squared, the coefficient is just 1, so the factors are 1 and 1. The factors of 6 are going to be 6 and 1 or 3 and 2. If we used 6 and 1, we'd have to say minus 6 and plus 1 to get to a negative 5 here in the center, but a negative 6 and a positive 1, we'd have to have a minus 6 here, so those factors aren't going to work. But if we have 3 and 2, 3 times 2 gives us 6 here, we can say minus 3 and minus 2, that gets us to a minus minus 5, and we'll have a negative 3 times a negative 2, which gives us a positive 6. So the factors we want to use are 3 and 2, so we can say we're going to rewrite this limit as the limit as x approaches 2, and then in the numerator here, we're going to set up our factors like this, and what we want to say is minus 3 and minus 2. That way we'll end up with x squared minus 2x and a minus 3x, which will give us a minus 5x, and then a negative 3 times a negative 2, which will give us a positive 6. And then what about our denominator? In the denominator we have x squared minus 4. Can we factor that? Well, of course we can because it's the difference of squares, so we know that we can factor this as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now at this point we're in really good shape because what we see is that we have a factor of x minus 2 in the numerator and a factor of x minus 2 in the denominator. So of course we can cancel those factors from the numerator and denominator. They cancel with one another. When you do this, when you cancel a factor from the numerator and denominator, what we can say is that the value x equals 2 x equals 2 represents a removable discontinuity because we would have had a discontinuity at the point x equals 2 because if we plugged 2 into this function in the denominator here, we'd have 2 minus 2 or 0. We'd have 0 in the denominator. That'd make the function undefined, so technically that might be a discontinuity, but because we were able to cancel this factor, we call it a removable discontinuity. That's really a side point. The point here about solving for the limit is that we've been able to cancel these factors, leaving us now with just the limit as x approaches 2 of x minus 3 in the numerator and x plus 2 in the denominator. Now that we've canceled a factor, what we want to do is use substitution again to see if we can find a real number value for the limit. So we'll plug in x equals 2 because we're approaching 2, x is approaching 2. So we'll plug in x equals 2 and we'll get 2 minus 3 in the numerator. We'll get 2 plus 2 in the denominator. And then when we take 2 minus 3, we get a negative 1. When we take 2 plus 2, we get a positive 4. So we can say then that the limit is going to be negative 1 fourth. So the limit of the function as x approaches 2 is going to be negative 1 fourth. And that's how you use factoring to solve for a limit.